Tucked away in a quiet corner of Herefordshire lies Burton Court, one of Britain's many minor historic houses. We're really off the beaten track slightly here at Burton Court. I say we're one of those lesser spotted stately homes perched on a hill in Herefordshire. <laughs> lesser spotted. But Burton Court is in trouble. Visitor numbers are down to a trickle, and its ageing owners, Commander Robert Simpson, I got him here, and his wife Helen, are struggling to make ends meet. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh dear. In an effort to save the house, their son Edward decides to turn Burton Court into an upmarket wedding venue. We are gathered here today. You should be sticking your head through the door like that. That's free. <laughs> Sorry, Mum. Look, can you, Mum? You just don't, you don't need to be involved. But mixing the family home with business pushes the Simpsons to the edge. What Edward does is bankrupt us. Trouble is, I'm in too deep. This monster I've created, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't stop it. It's early spring and the start of a new tourist season at Burton Court. Here we are, some of the things that we've shown over the years. These are some of the Chinese things. Uh, this is a mandarin coat. This is ermine lined one. This one is lined with ermine. It's got a beautiful embroidery on the sleeve. Helen Simpson has run Burton Court as a private museum for the last 30 years. The house itself is of no great distinction, but its unique collection of taxidermy, historical costumes, and miscellaneous curiosities has made it one of the most unusual places on the historic house trail. Incredible, isn't it? Absolutely incredible, incredible. In here, I've been making a, a list of everything. That's a rather nice um, jay, and these are all, because the light's gone in here now. There's um, a fox down there, and there's a little, there's a farmigan, which is quite nice, in winter plumage. And that, they're not pretty moth-eaten, aren't they? And there's a whole little set of things in there. They've fallen over. <laughs> I said some people like them, don't they? Yeah. See, there's a nice shag in there. <clears throat> this is a snow leopard. They're dying up. Unfortunately, it got rather wet when a bird, there was a bird ceiling. So the, really, the, the leather part's gone rather hard. But this is um, a snow leopard. Oh, oh dear. There was a book, or was a pamphlet published, England's thousands, Thousand Best Houses, and we were included in it. And what was I described as? A no, we were described both of us. Bundling idiot, wasn't it? No, no, no. Um, two demented magpies. Oh, demented magpie, yes. Is a demented magpie more stupid than a bumbling idiot? <laughs> It was Simon Jenkins, but more or less he was complimentary. It is as if the contents of the Victoria Natick had fallen into the Great Hall. Yes, everyone's gone through here, I don't know where they've gone. But the idiosyncratic world of Burton Court is facing extinction. Its eccentric charms now appeal only to die-hard WI ladies looking for a cheap day out. Actually, you clash horribly with those geraniums. I do hate to tell you that. Gosh, yes. I remember one W.I. came round and they said, photograph of me when I was about then. Oh, she used to be very good looking, you know. <laughs> Things that they say, you know, and they look, peering at your books and your family photographs. And of course, people are interested, I suppose, how the other half live. After all, stately homes are a recreational outlet to the public, whether they're Blenheim palaces or small Burton courts. They're all an afternoon to entertain people. That's what they look for, as they do going round museums, you know. Yeah. People love to look at beautiful things and... I mean, we're never stately. No, I mean, we're not. We're just a fine squire. I mean, going back a hundred years, it wasn't stately. Historic, but not stately. Robert Simpson had just retired as a commander in the Royal Navy when he bought Burton Court in 1960. The house was badly run down and seen as a white elephant. But Robert was looking for a challenge. 
he single-handedly converted the 19 acres of parkland into a soft fruit farm. By the 1970s, it was a flourishing business. But like Helen's museum, the fruit farm is now struggling. I mean, all this used to be planted. Well, and this, and up there, you see, the whole lot was planted. The picker-own has been dying for years. I don't see why, but it's a fact. I'm the only one doing it now. Time I went and had a drink, I think. Are you thirsty? Robert! Can you come... Can you come upstairs? We've got a problem with a leak in that conservation room. Oh, dear. Never rains, but it pours. Roof leaks um, are a continual problem at Burton Court. That is the paltry £3.50 museum entrance fee and dwindling returns from the fruit farm nowhere near cover the huge cost of maintaining the house. We cleaned it off, but there was all sorts of white muck on top of the boxes coming from the ceiling. Well, we had roof trouble there, but... Yeah, no, but that's since it was decorated, isn't it? Yes, it's come through it since it was two decorated. Week, two weeks, was it three weeks ago? It's, it's the lead, I expect. The lead? Flashing. The lead. Flashing. The lead oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, we'd have to look at the, the lead flashings, the, the lead gully. Yes. Oh, it could be pine needles, couldn't it? The burden of keeping the house wind and watertight is increasingly falling on Edward, Helen and Robert's 31-year-old son. I mean, it's just coming sleeping through here and sleeping down there, but the cost to repair that, it's just, we can't afford to, so we just literally collect it in buckets for now. Edward knows that buckets are not a long-term solution to Burton Court's growing list of maintenance problems. Just to fix the roof will cost over £50,000. If there's any health and safety people, they better not watch this. They can sod off anyway, it's my house. In a few years, Edward will inherit Burton Court. It's a daunting prospect. I've been working here for, what, eight years now, since university, and, you know, I've just been flogging myself on... on various things on like the fruit and then the exhibition which was doing nothing. Everything is just cost in this house so you just need to, you just got to get some sort of income off the house. And the costumes, the soft fruit, it's just not going to do it. It's April, and there's a revolution underway at Burton Court. Faced with the prospect of inheriting a wreck, Edward has convinced his parents that the way forward is to turn the house into an upmarket venue for weddings and corporate events. Helen's beloved museum was closed. Did you put all the wig boxes back in the cupboard, did we? Burton Court needed to have a new lease of life in terms of what we do with these costumes um, and the sort of, you know, the guided tours around with the, all the miscellaneous stuff we had. Basically, tourism was on the back foot and uh, there, is, there is potential for hosting weddings uh, and special sort of functions, if you like. Edward has no experience in the function business, or any business for that matter. His parents are taking a huge gamble on him, but he believes it's their only option. The house is my obsession. I really want to keep hold of it. You know, when you're born into it, you know, you do feel attached. And uh, I've started to appreciate the response, you know, the responsibility of having this place and maintaining it. So I feel that if we can develop the business and get some profit through the door, then hopefully this could keep the house afloat and uh, hopefully gradually improve the house as well. I think we'll, we'll be all right. In the future, the Great Hall will host wedding breakfasts, discos and conferences. Life at Burton Court is about to change forever. 35 years of... Showing costumes, yes. The end of an era, dear, the end of an era. The 
race is now on to transform the old house into a swanky venue so that Edward can make the most of the summer wedding season. Drums. This stuff. Saxophages. That is well. <laughs> Edward's spending thousands on a top landscape designer to spruce up the gardens. This is the, the real listed part of the house. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Building Officer would want to have a bit to say about what sort of smoke alarm we put in here. Yeah. Inside the house, there are big changes too. It has to be completely rewired to meet safety regulations. So in all rooms, basically, we have to have emergency lights. Well, mine are the, this, what we call the escape routes. That's all the passageways, plus any room you have to go through in between. So, mm. so effectively, in this one, it is everywhere. <laughs> Edward's also put in a new commercial kitchen, toilets, and much to his father's delight, a fully stocked bar. The most important thing is, first of all, to get, get the, uh, the nods from the fire officer, or local mm -hmm. authority people. Yeah. Uh, and then you can go down the next road of, how much? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or just saying, you'll shoot, how much? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The work has been a huge disruption for Robert and Helen. The strain is starting to show. We've been five months without a burglar alarm. And now he suddenly decides to turn up today. Leave me to me to do it. Yes, I know, but why had we had to wait five months, me feeling nervous at night, and no one covering us? And now he suddenly decides to come this morning. I was going to get another, another firm in. There are plenty of good firms. I'm lying in bed nervous without this, this cupboard. Why should I, with all the antiques and treasures in this house? It's the night before Burton Court's first wedding. Edward has spent well over £100,000 setting up the new business, far more than anticipated. Most of the money has come from Robert and Helen's life savings. How are you finding the adjustment? Well, it is a tremendous upheaval, but I've got to think of the future and, you know... Uh, how, how do you feel? It's been very expensive, hasn't it? I think there's a good chance it will pay off. Whether I shall live to see it, I don't know. I'm 83 years old. So far, Edward's got only five weddings booked for the entire season. He knows that it's not enough to break even. Never mind, start paying back his parents the money they've invested. I need to have at least 16 or more to break even. At least. Um, but that doesn't allow for all the breakages and the, the, the maintenance issues and things that are, I know need to be done. And I'm not too sure how it's going to turn out. A bit of wind, really. Do a bit of clean, actually. There we go. In just a few hours, the guests will be arriving for Burton Court's first wedding. Yeah. Real L. Real L Madrid. Hobson's. Shropshire's finest. Edwards drafted in his mate Star to help with the events. But Star hasn't got much experience in the function business either. It's like a one-man band because of the costs involved for the running costs at the moment. Or a two-man band, if you want, star and myself. In a way, it's the best way to do it at the moment. It's a learn-on-the-job kind of thing. Then yeah, yeah, learning on the job, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's great for, for me as director that to, to, I'm doing this sort of thing because then I know myself what's needed. Like how to assemble a chair cover properly. <laughs> it's not very well done, is it? Not wanting to be left out, Helen has volunteered herself as Burton Court's unofficial florist. Of course, we've shared the house with people for many years. I mean, 33 years I've had people coming round the house, coach parties and stone teas for hundreds of people. And I am used to it, but this is uh, different. Leave the tops off, leave them breathe, Robert. Do you leave the tops off? Well, I thought Let that wasn't breathe. the way to behave, but... I'm an ignorant bugger and no, I don't no. know how to behave. No. Accidents happen in the best of houses. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. 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 Well, everywhere. What? Everywhere. All around. I haven't seen anyone I know. Where are they going? Into the tents. Yeah, Pim's. Pim's on the lawn. Yeah. Bouncer Castle. Oh, it's a bit early for me to have a drink. They're not taking theirs. <laughs> As the guests sip pims and champagne in the smart new gardens, Edward tries to get to grips with the fine art of waiting, while Helen casts a critical eye over some of his changes. Well, I think it's too deep. The colour I like, but I think it's too deep. And ladies in pretty stiletto hills, you know, it's better. I think they do fine. They walk on the grass anyway, but... <laughs> What is this? I think it's called a bouncy castle. Yeah. Although it's not much of a castle, is it? Not my idea, right? Oh, oh, it seems to attract the flies. I got him here. This is a bit more than the planned. We laid out for 45, but there's a few standing in the back, which is surprising. Maybe they just wanted to attend the ceremony. Watching it. You shouldn't be sticking your head through the door like that. That's pretty. Doesn't matter. Yeah, no, it does matter. It well, matters I like a lot. To know how shouldn't they go that. and know the sound of it. What was he telling you off? For, for going, putting my head round the door during the ceremony. Well, of course I want to see how it's going. It looks lovely. They've got some lovely outfits on. So, Mike, if you'd like to take an answering, or would you like to place it on a finger? Will they go straight through? Are they having drinks in here? Reception drinks in here. What? Reception drinks in here. In here first? Oh, well, I'll get out of the yeah, way. Yeah, you can get out of the way, I think. I guess. <laughs> Yes, please. Okay. You okay for mine? He gets very uptight. Well, of course, he doesn't want his own mother around, does he? Really? Anyway, I've got my uses, haven't I? <laughs> I think it's went very well, very successful. I think it went very well. Um, it's, um, yeah, I think I'm very happy with it. Very happy, very happy. It's a nice casual affair, nice and informal. And it uh, seemed to go very well, yeah. The new business has got off to a good start. But until the function diary begins to fill up, the Simpsons are going to need the income from the fruit farm for a few more seasons at least. But Robert doesn't think that Edward has either the time or the inclination to keep the farm going. Well, I think this has got to be my last season. I'm too bloody old to do it. Uh, Ed, whether he can do it, I don't know. He's no interest in the land or in growing anything. If you had to do weddings, Mr. Simpson, would you like it or would it not be for you? No, it wouldn't be for me, but uh, I'd be very glad of the takings insofar as they come to me. I get the sense from Ed that he's quite conscious of the fact that it's been your money and Helen's money. Yes. That's a sort of a, quite a pressure for him. Oh, yes. Same in any business, is it going to pay off?
Helen is also becoming increasingly worried about money. Most of their life savings have gone, and there's no prospect of a return from Edward's business in the short term. Reluctantly, she's decided it's time to start selling her precious collection. It is absolutely mounting up, you know. I've had to sell a lot of shares on whatever I've gotten. I can't go on and on doing that, you know. So both my husband and I are getting older and could fall sick and we may need money for our old age, you know, health-wise. So we can't go on and on spending. How did you feel when sort of Ed first said this is what you know you thought was the good thing to do? Well, I thought it was um, innovative, and I thought um, it may be the way forward. Obviously, we weren't making enough money to keep the house up on just entrance money to as a museum, and it's, we hope it's the right way forward. I think the future is very much in jeopardy, really. I don't want to become a hotel. You see, I don't want it to become that commercial. Very sad, isn't it? Sad to see them go. My friends. <laughs> yes. It's due, and Edward's second function of the year. With booking still thin on the ground, it's important that the prestigious society dinner goes well. But Edward's got a problem. The guest speaker, Lord Chris Patton, is late. Edward has to improvise with an impromptu tour. All we've done is put in about 4,500 plants. Basically, just trying to recreate how it was its heydays. So There's a lot of uh, arts and crafts feel. How's he doing? Um, very well. It Spouting off very well. <laughs> Reds, a lot of this silver foliage from. He like does quite well because this is his baby, all this. On a raised plateau area. It's uh, like a soft palette of colours. So the overall effect is um, it's very nice, especially for when we're doing weddings here. It's going on for a while. Yes, it's gone a bit mad. But uh, my father will, and my mother will take you through now into the. We'll split you into half. Father, if you'd like to take this group. Where? Where to? Uh, around, <laughs> around the house. If you start one route and uh, Mother takes the other route. Mother, do you want to take this lot? All right, then. Come on. Well, now, this is the library, which is very much the Regency type of a house. Uh, that marker by itself, without the table, is now worth a lot of money. Why? I don't know. <laughs> the bookcase was put in by the Brewster family who were here for 200 years. And this is also one of the best things I ever bought. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? A polar bear. What else shall I talk about? <laughs> <laughs> That's a World War II searchlight mirror. We've got several of those in the house, one in the Regency room. And the harp, if anyone wants to play it, you're welcome. Thankfully, Lord Patton finally arrives. It's a wonderful house. Oh, well, I'm glad you like How it. Your family been here? We've only been here 42. The family died out. I came from a historic house, though, in Herefordshire. Oh, and my... Yes, we were planning to do all that. We're just starting to do weddings. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand for grace? Benedictus et Deus in Doni Suis. Et sanctus in omnibus operibus suis. What did you think of him, Mr. Simpson? Uh, well, I think he's more important than me. I'm not a lord. I hope to be someday, but <laughs> I'm not at the moment. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> you think so? Oh, yes. Oh, dear. <laughs> Does it feel a bit strange sometimes when this sort of 90 people eating a, a big fancy dinner in there. And yeah, I think, well, I wouldn't mind eating a big fancy dinner myself. No, I wouldn't, no, I'm quite fine, I'm quite happy. Quite happy with a ham sandwich. Only my husband's had his warfarin, that's most important. Is 
to see the Great Hall so busy and... Everything looks absolute perfection to me. I just looked in. Everything looks perfect. I have no regrets coming here. In 1960 I bought this house and I think it's the best thing I ever did. I think I probably drank more then than I do now. But I've been thirsty for the last 70 odd years. <laughs> Reading, well, I'm reading this book called The Destruction of the Country House, and it really outlines no less than a thousand houses which we have lost in this country in, from the years 1875 to 1975. Here's some of the houses you see that are gone. Look at them, all of them, they've all gone, gone forever. Burton Court could easily have been lost too. In the late 19th century, it was owned by the Clues, a wealthy shipping family. With a staff of 23 servants, the Clues enjoyed a constant round of hunting, shooting and garden parties. It was Burton Court's heyday. We've got records of what life was like here right up until the 1920s and 30s when the staff were in full swing. But in the First World War, the halcyon days were shattered. They lost their only son and heir, who was killed in France, you know, at a very early age, and so their heart was broken. They do say that all the cattle here were black, and, and the sheep were black, and sort of in mourning after that he died. And um, when Mrs. Clues died, that was an end of an era. With no heir to take over, the 1,500-acre estate was broken up and sold. The bells still ring in the house, but there's no one to answer them, you know. The future of Burton Court is once again uncertain. Its fate is now in Edward's hands. I'm sure that children would love to grow up here and carry on with the house. It is a challenge, but it can be great fun. Well, it's not an ordinary house. <laughs> It's late June. Heavy summer storms have battered the house and rain has cascaded through the roof, leaving a seven-foot hole in the ceiling of Edward's new bar. Directly above, the conservation room where Helen's precious costumes are stored has also been damaged. What was it like when you walked in in the morning? Well, horrific. I just first thing I thought was the costumes. You can replace wallpaper and carpeting, but some of these costumes are so rare that was my first thought. For Edward, it's a much more serious problem. It's not good preparation for a wedding in two days' time. There's worse news. The ceiling is so badly damaged that it can't be replastered before the wedding. Edward's still got only five weddings booked for the year, so he can't afford to cancel. All he can do is try to conceal the damage. I can't plaster over in time, so I have to knock up some plyboard on there just for the wedding, then paint it over. It's a bodge, but um, there's nothing else I can do. Well, this is the cause of the problem. It's a Nokia two-inch hole. This got blocked with these, with these bloody things. Pine needles from that big tree behind us. And as that got blocked, all that water, a load of spilled underneath and it was just going over the top of here and coming down into the house straight down here into the attic room down from there into the conservation room and down from there into the bar so this little hole has just cost me thousands of pounds Clearing pine needles out of the gutters is just one of the many essential jobs that Edward hasn't had time to do. Juggling maintenance, work on the fruit farm, 
and the functions business is proving too much. Burton Court's second wedding of the year is going to stretch an already stressed Edward to the limit. In an hour's time, guests are due to arrive for an elaborate wedding reception. He's hoping that no one will notice his makeshift ceiling repair. I'll just wipe the bottoms off and I'll get a cloth from the kitchen because they may be wet on the table here. 125 guests are expected, but the Great Hall only seats 88. Edward has assured the bride and groom he can make it work. He wasn't in a position to turn the business away. It's the biggest sort of catering um, function we've done. So we've set up in all three rooms, the Great Hall, the Regency Room where the buffets have been dispensed from as well, and a few more overflow in the bar as well. devised an elaborate table plan to try and squeeze all the guests in. He takes his place at the front of house to direct everyone to the right seats. But the bar is chronically understaffed, and as people flood in, he has to desert his post. Yeah, whatever is free, just keep trotting down. Away what, sorry, what's free? Is this it, or is there anything more? No, just keep adding to it. Keep crossing down Hobson's, yeah? With no one to guide people to their seats, it quickly descends into chaos. We can only fit 88 in here. There's about 20. So the overflow is over there, and, and, and Martin and Pitt will be on that top table. They'll be table. on the top table. Right. I'm going to announce them for it. Are you the people who are doing the speeches, are you? Well, I'm doing speech, and he's doing a speech, yes. Right. Uh, I think someone else must have taken your seat by mistake. I'm sorry. I did tell them, but it's just like. Everyone's sitting in the Great Hall and it's full of capacity. Yeah, of course, yeah. your friends who are doing the speeches, they've got nowhere to sit. Well, well, can you deal with it? Because... I can get some, I can just move some people out if they don't mind moving into the bar. Well, it's not my job to do that, really. No, 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 no. no, no, no. So I'll do the announcing yes, now. Thank you. We've got your drinks here, you've read it. I'll, I'll, I'll announce you through. Wife. I'll do a bit of a speech and sort it all out. Yeah. Right, a bit of a speech. Ladies and gentlemen! Use the bone. Someone hit the bone there. Go on, Bill, give it a whack. Always give it a whack. Here it gives it a mouse. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome all to Burton Court. Just a slight alteration for it. I don't want to make musical chairs out of everyone, but I just wanted to make sure the people are sitting in here who are supposed to be sitting here. Okay. Just it won't take five. It won't take a couple of minutes. And then we'll just get through, OK. Just want to check here. Uh, the Lee family, I think they're next door. The Lees? Yes. Fine. It's Peter Harrison, Julie Harrison. It's OK if you can move into the bar, because we need to make some space for the, for the people doing the speeches. So it's OK if you can, if you can up, up seats. Um, Martin Pryor, Joe Pryor, if you can have you into the bar as well, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. If I can just ask uh, our dear uh, Martin's dear uh, old Grace. Uh, sorry, let me get this right. First of all, can I announce? Can I announce the bride and groom, please? Martin and Pitt. Martin and Pitt. Martin Pitt. Everyone up standing, please. Uh, I think I needed a, I think I needed an extra member of staff in actually to be honest with you. Uh, it's just a lot of people all at once, but uh, there's slight, slight cock up with the seating just for a couple of people. I think it's starting to, it's starting to go okay again now. Is one of the girls helping? Do you want a hand? The staff are stretched to capacity, so Helen offers to lend a hand. Pretty they smell bad, haven't they? Enjoy it, yes, good. I'm glad you're in the house, yes. And because our rates are now three and a half thousand a year, it's 
just been up to Morrison's to get the soda more water. soda, yes, and more soda water and more, more le lemons and lime. Mums come in useful sometimes, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Mum. Please, no. You know, but I, you ask me. No, I do, but uh, you keep showing me away. But listen, Edward, even the camera are picking it up that you're being rude to me. Mum, you just don't go in Yeah, but I'm not. I just offered to start. He said, yes, you want to come in? The pressure of trying to combine a family home and a business is starting to take its toll. But tension in the family isn't what's worrying Edward. He expected the function diary to be filling up by now. It isn't. There's a lot of money to recuperate, a lot of money to, to make to, just to break even. So, I mean, things are good at the moment, but I know there's, it will dry up in, um, you know, in uh, some later months. So I've really got to start thinking ahead now, really. What can be done for late summer and, uh, and beyond? That must be quite a bit of pressure, really, wasn't it? Um, well, yeah, it is. There's no doubt about that. <clears throat> yeah, there's pressure. The beginning of July sees the first day of the fruit picking season. Over the years, the fruit farm has kept Burton Court afloat. This year, they need the money more than ever. While they wait for the first customers, Edward tries to do some last minute weed whacking. It's another neglected job. Nutty thing. What's the matter with it, Edward? It keeps breaking down every five minutes. No, I'm not looking with your equipment at the moment, are you? No. Over at the pay tent, the rush that they had hoped for has not materialised. So it's been quiet this afternoon, then. It's not been quiet, it's been absolutely nothing happened. Not a customer. Haven't sold a strawberry. Is this a streaming line? The streamer line's no good. That's it. Great. Something else breaks down. Twenty years ago, we'd have twenty cars in the field. Things will improve, I hope, when the raspberries start. Strawberries don't freeze, and raspberries do. Strawberries used to be the most important crop, now it's raspberries. Welcome to Burton Court, and um, I hope you'll be able to tell us what we've got in the way of Chinese things. <laughs> Two weeks later, with taking still slow on the fruit farm, Helen has decided to sell the most prized part of her costume collection. A top London expert has come to give her a valuation. If the costumes are worth what she thinks they are, all their money worries will be solved. I have a feeling that those those were looted and the summer palace in Peking are, lo are worth a lot of money. Those with the fur. Time alone will tell. If it goes up on the open market, we'll see what they will fetch. What would you do? Would what would I do with the money, you mean? Yeah. Well, I don't know. What would I do with the money, darling, if I got do a lot of... Me. Oh, <laughs> give it to me. Give it to the old man. 
What would you do with it? Uh, well, uh, Helen would say I'll drink it. Oh. Uh, and I probably would. Mm -hmm. One of those were the Imperial Yellow that, um... Yeah, not unfortunately Imperial Yellow, um, but uh, again, these are, these are hangings that were made for the export market from mm. pieces of textiles that the Chinese no longer use anymore. A sort of fourth rank official would have worn this. The, the plume would have gone in the jade holder here. Yes. But again, that, that just needs a little fixing, doesn't it? There's a little mm. bit of work to be done. You're going to keep some conservator very, very happy for many years. Uh, <laughs> and how much that cost me? Yeah, well... <laughs> um, how long's a piece of string? Well, exactly. <laughs> Essentially, there's not a great value here, because she kept mentioning the word imperial yellow. And of course, anything that's imperial yellow is worth um, a lot of money today. But sadly, there isn't any imperial yellow in this collection. We'll be in touch soon. Yes, thank you very much for coming. Great. I think she is very, quite very knowledgeable on the subject, isn't she? But they're going to write me a letter, so we'll digest oh. it. It's quite not a blue sky. Oh. After a disappointingly low valuation, Helen decides to postpone selling the Chinese collection. What's happening today, David? The biggest, well, not the, not the biggest in number, but the most elaborate wedding of the year, I think. So, yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to plan. There's a lot of movement for guests and um, lots of entertainment and just basically lots going on. <laughs> yeah. After the last wedding, Edward has determined that this one will run like clockwork. So is this going to be a challenge? <sighs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's going to be a challenge, all right, definitely. Definitely. Um, it needs a lot of um, good timing and precision. So it'll be CD1, track one, for coming in. For the entrance. For the entrance. Yeah. Um, and you'll give me the, she'll give me the nod. You'll give me the nod, Sheila, won't you? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> to turn off. Yeah, to turn it off. Yeah. I'll go. Cut. <laughs> it's part of Edward's job to present a cheerful face to the public. But the reality of his personal situation is sobering. I get about forty pound, forty pound a week from the government because I'm low income. <laughs> um, I get, I can only afford. I can't really do afford that. But I'm taking about five hundred pound. Uh, works out well, more like about four hundred pounds a month out of the company. I had some uh, shares and stuff, but I still. I mean, that's all gone through into the company. Everything, everything I've got. Apart from a car is in the company. My one luxury, really, but I don't know how much longer I can keep that, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> okay, start. Have we got relay ready for the, for the music? Yeah, well, we'll have to get one back in now. Do you want Dire Straits, though? Yeah. No. Well, well, that's well, that's what they got. Look, if you just get just get Abby. No, it's their CD. Bring Abby. What, what, if you can be at the bar, Abby, just buy the door curtain. I'll be at the door. The yeah, sorry, straight on. Instead of talking about lighting a fire in the Great Hall, I don't think it's necessary. No. Be absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? No. Light a fire to today. Insane. You go. Start again. Okay, start again. Okay. So they just understand. Louder, louder as you can. <laughs> Bloody radiators on. I'm a bit flustered and busy at the moment. Okay. Oh, so start put the master volume down. Great. Cheers, chat. I'd like you all to look at me. I'm going to take two shots, then I want you to give me a wave, all right? OK, here we go. I haven't seen your today. Well, she's, she doesn't need to be involved. I mean, she's, there's no reason to be here, really, so... So, I don't know if she's in or out, but, you know, she doesn't need to be here. 
And there's the, you know, it's, it's, my, it's my business, so she doesn't need to be involved in the, like this at all, so. And ready and pull. It's uh, it's difficult for her to get the balance between the you know the public side and the private house. Um, she still has trouble with some of those issues, I think. So. Helen has been told to keep out of the way, but being confined to her bedroom isn't much fun when it's directly above the great hall and the main entrance. Able to get to sleep and where No, I, I don't until you don't you don't until the last person goes and that noise dies down, you know. Especially if you leave the great hall door open, it comes up the stairs, doesn't it? You can hear it now. I'm not uh, Condemning it, it's part of the business, I suppose, now. It's the changeover I've got to get used to. I wouldn't like it every Saturday night, would I? Oh. I'll just get myself a cottage and go and live away. I wouldn't be an interfering old mum, would I? <laughs> It's, you taste it's really lovely. It's a real genuine double Gloucester. A few days later, and Helen's having a function of her own. It's a chance for her to catch up with old friends. Do come and have We had the most terrible people at the weekend. Oh, they were awful. It was awful. But you see, sadly, sadly, mm. those are the people who had the money these awful. days. And then Absolutely they got hold of my hat, got my hat in the hall, and one I wear for funerals, which is the black one with mm. the and, and and I couldn't find them looking in the hedges. Anyway, they were on the the posts outside in the front door. It upset me terribly. I thought, it was just spite for doing that to me. I, do, I just find it. I, I don't know how you did. I just well, know. you know, but I, I just want to retire, really. And, well, and Robert's 83. You? Well, I'm trying to, because I said to everybody, you must cope with these people. I just can't, but I don't know. The reminder of how their life used to be is making Helen have second thoughts about Edward's venture. I know there are some, one place in Herefordshire will only have five weddings a year, full stop. Everybody got something to eat. Has it been harder than you expected? Yes, I, I, it has. It's taken its toll. I mean, at, um, at my age, you can't do what you did at 61. And, of course, with my husband really ill and I'm worried about his health. It has been difficult. How it will resolve itself, I don't know. Where is Ed? Everybody's asking where Ed is. I thought he'd be here. He's around, isn't he? Edward's also been doing some thinking. He's got a plan to get his function business out of the red, but it'll involve even more changes for Helen and Robert, and even more expense. Bedrooms is, I think, important, because I know for every, every function, especially a wedding, they'll be keen to, to stay here. Overnight, um, as we're in a remote area, it's, it'd be you can almost say it's like guaranteed, guaranteed cash, guaranteed money. If, if, they're, if they're having a wedding, they're, they're very likely to use the bedroom, so you, it's maximising profits. Edward's plan is to restore some of Burton Court's 15 disused bedrooms, but before he can do anything, he's got to consult the local fire officer. I think it's certainly achievable. Uh, we've got to be quite careful and deliberate about how we do it. Okay. I think it seems likely that some of the corridors on the ground floor and first floor will have to have sprinklers in 
So the bottom line is it's going to be expensive. <laughs> yeah. There is only one place the money can come from. I didn't want to ever borrow money again from my father, but um, my parents have to pay, help pay for this because there's no, my company can't possibly pay for it. It's a huge expense. All you can do is spend money. It's all pay out, no pay in so far. What Edward does is bankrupt us. All the gardens are looking so lovely now. It's not a big fun. Sorry. The time has come for the first part of Helen's costume collection to go under the hammer. Robert gave Helen these costumes as a wedding present 40 years ago. So moving straight on with lot number 500, um, we've got our blue and uh, saffron court dress here, shown by Bob on the model. 50 iron bit, 55, 60, 5, 65, 70, 5, 75. Hammers up, finished at 75. With the okay, if you play out here, there was 100, I put reserve Lots, on there. Uh, 503 mm. now, the, uh, the colour not going there, well. No. there. So it'll certainly be seen coming in that one. 505, can you start with 100? 50 iron bit, 50 pounds iron bit, 55, 60, 5, 70, 5, 80. All done at 80 pounds. Hammers up, finished at 80. Mm, they're not going. Nine. They're going below the reserves. They're not going. 25, 30. 35, 35 pounds. August should be one of the busiest months for weddings. At Burton Court, they have completely dried up. After the disappointing result at the auction and a bad season on the fruit farm, the situation is looking bleak. Far from getting more money to renovate bedrooms, Edward's in for a shock. Star is Edward's one and only employee, but now his job is on the line. Do you have a view on the star situation? Uh, well, I wouldn't call it a situation. It's whether I can pay him. Very important. What's your feeling then? I'd say a few more weeks. Mm. A few more weeks turns out to be a few more days. No, it's just me on my own. I mean, it's going to be. Uh, I have no chance to think about it. It's, I'm not, I, I, I need some time to think um, and reassess, but it's going to be difficult. It's a bitter realisation for Edward. He can exclude Helen from weddings, but as long as the business stays in the red, he will never be in full control. I, I don't like being told by my mother, you know, that we can't, like, I can't do this, I can't do that, but, um, but that's the situation, that's what, how it happened. So, yeah. Do you ever kind of think, why did I start? Uh, yeah, quite often. And the trouble is, I'm in too deep, so I, you know, I can't, I can't get out now. <laughs> All the burns on me. So this monster I've created, yeah, I, I can't, I can't stop it. Edwards had enough. He's leaving. He's decided that the only way he can continue running the business is if he's not living under the same roof as his parents. But he can't go far. He's broke. For the time being, his new home is a semi-derelict coach building just 50 yards from his mum and dad's back door. It might not be far, but for Edward, it's a symbolic gesture. Just trying to get the divide between the home 
in the business. The only way I can, we can really achieve that is by moving out of the house. The summer is at an end. Helen is picking flowers for the local harvest festival, something she's done for the last four decades. It's been a difficult year for Helen and Robert. Their life at Burton Court has been turned upside down and their future is now far more uncertain than it was before Edward started the new business. Despite having no more functions booked, Edward's pressing on regardless. He's persuaded his parents to give him one last chunk of money, and he's hired a marketing team to help him relaunch Burton Court for next season. You don't need a logo. You need an identity. You need an identity. The breezes and the sunshine and soft, refreshing rain. We put the flag up occasionally, you know, yeah. and stuff. Um, if, if I did take him down, it wouldn't be the same, would it? No. Not at all. Not at all. No. 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 I think you've got the feel for the house. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to what you can do. In a way, I wish we were a museum again. Things would be more quiet and peaceful. But um, Edward has put a lot of work into it best he could and uh, you know we're all on a learning curve with the whole thing really. He that does love the place I think that's quite genuine. I think um, if he finds the right sort of girl then I'd be terribly happy to hand over to her she can do the flower arrangements. <laughs> Um, you, you, you know, I hope it is ongoing. I think all stately homeowners have struggled over the years, hope that it, the heritage is there for the families that come on the generations. But as I said before, who's to know in 100 years' time what Burton Court will be doing?